Hi everyone, welcome to the next episode of Zez Retro. I'm doing it totally different to my other videos. This is a follow-up from the video where I was talking about the master system, the Sega master system that they produced for exclusively for the Soviet Union in late 1990 or 1991. There's a card up the top. You should check out that video, go through the whole history of how I found this unit. Uh, I live in Europe. I picked it up from a local seller. And it basically turned out that in late 1990, Sega wanted to get in on that Soviet Union market because that was the capitalism style of the time. And they produced a whole new PCB variant just to be sold in the Soviet Union. And well, history now tells us that about 18 months later, the whole country, the whole regime collapsed. And we presume that's when Sega also stopped selling these. We don't have any really good pictures online of the PCB. So I've been taking some high quality pics with my uh, SLR camera. And I wanted to, at the same time, make a video giving you a little tour of the PCB because I think it's really interesting. I'm not an electronics expert. I don't, I can poke around and I know what some chips are, but I'm, I'm certainly going to get some things wrong. But I still think even for me, there's some interesting stuff that we're going to go through. Let's check it out. In the Soviet Union, they didn't have RGB or component inputs. They didn't even have S-Video and Composite. The standard at the time was RF, good old aerial cable, and it was CCAM, not NTSC color encoding or PAL encoding, uh, because there were some diplomatic relations apparently between France and the Soviet Union, they adopted a variant of CCAM. So Sega, if they wanted to sell consoles, in the Soviet Union, they had to produce a special variant that produced CCAM over RF. And we're going to look at the board and see that they stripped out the other parts. This doesn't have a uh, the, the regular master system DIN on there or something like that. And we're going to have a look at this PCB, see how it's a totally new revision. And it's got some weird shit going on. I can't work it out. I'm hoping a few of you there can give me some insights when we take this tour. So this is a shot of the whole motherboard. You can see that there's no main DIN out there. Uh, what I will show you later that they it does include the Sony CXA video encoder. And that's the chip that takes the raw RGBS off the VDP, off the video chip, and it turns it into S-Video, it turns it into composite, and it also outputs a, a more attenuated version of RGB as much as I've understood. We're going to see that that chip is on the board, but uh, they don't have any composite out. They don't have the DIN on there. What we see here is this serial number PBC cam. There we go. Hint, hint. This unit produces C cam, not PAL or NTSC. Uh, that serial number, if you Google that, doesn't show up much. Sega 1990, so they designed it in 1990. We think that it might have gone on sale in about 1991. So let's take a little tour over the chips very quickly. The main chips on this board are what you would expect to find in any Sega Master System. We've got our Zilog. Uh, we've got the Zilog Z80 CPU. That's pretty standard. If we go underneath that, that is the ROM that holds the built-in game. It's the Alex Kid game. It's Alex Kid uh, in Miracle Land. God, why don't I know that? Wonderland? Miracle Land. Whatever. Alex Kid. The the guy with the thing. Uh, as much as I can tell, that's just the same ROM that was on uh, European PAL systems. There's nothing specific as much as I can tell about that particular ROM. Now, as we come down here, that's a standard RAM chip that you might find in any Sega Master System. And then as I slide it along there, that's our input controller along the middle. I don't know if you're starting to, to notice something along the way. This board uses a different manufacture process than the rest. This looks like, look, I'm no expert, but it looks more advanced. There's a lot of surface mount resistors and, and capacitors and uh, it, when I look at pictures of other master systems and mega, even Genesis Mega Drives, they look like older. This looks like this nice green mask and 
look, we'll get to there's some weird shit going on with this. We'll keep on going. All right, going down here, we've got our VRAM banks here. Two VRAM chips, that's pretty normal. And then upwards there, that's our clock. So this is telling us this is definitely running at 50 hertz. This is a uh, unit meant for 50. I mean, it's Soviet Union runs on, uh, and Russia today runs on 50 hertz power. So this would have been a 50 hertz unit. Uh, and CCAM, as I says, said, that's the, the VDP, that's the video chip. And that again is a pretty standard uh, video VDP that's in a bunch of other mass systems. So, so far, nothing weird, nothing strange about this. Remember though, this is the unit that produces CCAM over RF. And now let's go a little bit north and we're gonna look at the video out. So we've got the VDP and the VDP is producing uh, RGBS, red, green, blue, and sync. And it's some of those pins in there. I'm not entirely sure which ones. And above that, above the VDP, I'll just position it nicely. Uh, we've got the Sony CXA video encoder. Again, this is a standard chip on master systems and it'll take the RGBS straight off the VDP and it will then encode composite it'll encode S video. Uh, it will then also output another version of RGBS, uh, which as I understand is more like attenuated and has the signals uh, brought to the correct levels. I'm not the expert with that wording. Please uh, put something in the comments and help me out on that one. But that's standard, it's taken that off and it's the video encoder chip. Now. Why does that need to be there? Why do we need to create S-Video and Composite if we're just outputting RF? Because if you wanna make RF, you gotta make Composite. And if you want Composite, then you need to use this Sony CXA chip, or at least that's what Sega thought at the time. So we can see here at the top, the, mean, the, the DIN isn't there. That's where your standard master system plug would be. And it's not there. And again, I guess Sega left it off because they wanted to save money, that wasn't gonna be used, so why would you bother? Um, over here, now, pin five. Pin five is the pin that outputs uh, composite video off the CXA encoder. And by looking at the traces, I can't quite show you here, but on the under, by looking at the underside, I've determined that, that that composite out is both heading in this direction and it's heading off into the RF. It's going through some caps. Uh, it's going through a cap. It's going through a couple of resistors. And then it's heading into our familiar looking RF box. And those three there, I'm pretty sure uh, it's, uh, that's taking composite video, mono audio, and five volts. And that's what it needs for this to encode uh, into RF. One interesting part about this is what's going on. So usually a master system would output RGB. What seems to be happening here, again, looking at the, at the traces, is the RGBS is coming off the VDP and then it's being routed into the CXA encoder and then the output, and then it's just being sent straight up to the main out here. These outputs here that would be the main DIN, they are not taking off these three pins. They're the output of the CXA. That's the RGB coming out of that. That's like proper, a bit more proper RGB. That is not what is being connected to these ports here. It's basically ripping the direct RGBS off the VDP. It's being routed into this chip and then being routed up to that. What I take this to mean is that if you put a DIN on that, the output wouldn't be a standard Sega Master System output. I reckon the output would be more like the French Sega Master System. That's the one that's got the cable with the, the, the box in the middle of it. Because remember in France, they could, uh, they didn't, uh, France also uses CCAM and their solution there was to not output composite, to not output S-Video and to only output uh, RGB. And the French master system doesn't even have this chip at all. The French master system basically takes the output of the VDP and just slams it straight onto 
the output DIN and then the attenuation and the extra uh, signal manipulation that's needed to comply with the SCART standard, it's done in that box in the middle of the cable. So I poked around on those uh, outputs and I reckon uh, if you put a DIN on that, you would need the French master system cable for it to work. Now, I wanna look a little bit though at the composite that's coming off the Sony CXA encoder because the thing that we're going for here is that if you look at the spec sheet for the Sony CXA encoder chip, it doesn't output CCAM. The, the data sheet says it only outputs NTSE or PAL. So here's the thing, I don't know how the hell this thing is outputting CCAM. Now you might be saying, well, maybe uh, it's coming off as, as PAL out of the CXA chip. And then when it goes into the RF box, it's actually then getting converted to CCAM. What I'm gonna do now is poke around on pin five here. This is the pin here that looks like it's not connected. It's connected underneath. That's the composite output. And I'm gonna get a signal off of that. And I can see that it's actually CCAM. So what I've got here is I've got the simplest solution, two wires, ground and composite. This is not a shielded cable. This is a very dodgy solution. Kids, don't try this at home. I've got this hooked into my PVM 9L2 and I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna connect one side to ground, any ground will do. And what I've done, what I'm showing you right now in the window is the signal that's coming off of that. Uh, keep in mind, the signal that you're seeing in the, 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 the picture that you're seeing in the picture in picture is not the live version that I'm touching right now because I don't have an extra camera with an extra tripod to film all this stuff at once. So I'll just do this again later and point the camera here instead. It's in black and white. It says on the screen of the PVM, 50 hertz, and it's it, it, it thinks it's a PAL signal, but it's in black and white. Now, this PVM, the 9L2, does not accept CCAM. If you look at the spec sheet, it only, it's not multi-format. It only takes NTSC or PAL. It doesn't take CCAM. And what happens uh, when you, you feed a signal into a TV it doesn't understand like that, it'll show you only black and white because of the way the, the, the video standards work. That if you put uh, an NTSC into a PAL TV and it doesn't understand it, it'll show you a black and white signal due to the way the, the broadcast standards are. So this is only showing black and white on this PVM. Uh, also, I have later tried this same little trick uh, plugging it into a Sony, a later a Sony LCD monitor of mine that does support CCAM. It says that specifically on the spec sheet. And when I plug that in, it shows color. So I infer from that that this is actually outputting CCAM. If my logic is wrong, please tell me because I don't have a device that I can just plug in composite and be like, oh, this is NTSC, this is PAL, this is CCAM, this is a boring video that's going on too long. No. Wait, yes. Anyway, my point is I can only infer that this is actually CCAM and it's weird because, look, I don't know how the hell this is doing it. Is it a, a different revision of the trip? How did Sega get to do this? I have no idea. We have a few more things on this motherboard to look at because, so already things like, you may have already spotted over here, these pots here, I, I have no fucking idea what they do. I have no idea what these ones do. And if I drag it over here, this is the really weird bit. This Hitachi chip, I have no idea what it does. I, I can't see what it does. I'm not uh, enough of an electrical engineer to be able to look at the traces and work out what it does. I can't find anything for that code online. Um, maybe it's doing something. Is this somehow involved in the CCAM? That is not, that chip is not on any other uh, Sega Master System. That is not, it's only on this revision and I can't find any other information about this chip. And coming back to my point earlier about how the manufacturing process of this board looks different to other Genesis and Master Systems, that chip just looks newer than the other chips, right? Like that's an OG CXA, 
uh, you know, that big old VDP, that's an OG one. But this Hitachi chip looks kind of new and I have no idea what it does. My best guess is that it was a spy device put in there by the Soviet Union because this was communism it was being sold into, right? And this device was the center of capitalism. You could literally play a Mickey Mouse game on this. What better symbol of capitalism besides Ronald? Though Ronald, they're already selling Ronald McBurgers in Moscow. Look, I don't know. That's the only, a crazy communist conspiracy theory is the only crazy idea that can come up for what the hell this Hitachi chip does. If you have some thoughts on my crazy conspiracy theory, please leave them in the capitalist comments below. Tell me something about it. It's how this thing is doing Ccam and what the hell this Hitachi chip does. I have no idea. So that's the tour for today. Uh, I'm going to put this up on SMS Power. I wanted to make this video just to give you a bit of a talking points to go through it. There's some mysteries on there. If you can enlighten me as to what the hell is going on this board, I would deeply appreciate it. Thanks for sticking through with this super geeky video. I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.